everybody, I'm Jack, and today I'm just going to walk you through some of the basics of the LCMS here. Dr. Popescu just wanted me to talk to you all about it because I have some research experience on this instrument. So first off, we have the Agilent HPLC system here interfaced with a triple quadrupole mass spectrometer, and we can really combine some of the benefits of both HPLC uh, in terms of chromatographic separation and then pair that with the very um, sensitive and selective methods of mass spectrometry. So personally, I use the LCMS here for trace chemical determination of DNA nucleosides, which are just the DNA bases and any sort of oxidation products that may be coming from environmental oxidation agents. And this, uh, this concentration range has shown from anywhere between high nanomolar to, and low uh, micromolar on the high end, all the way down to uh, upper end picomolar in terms of sensitivity for the instrument. And we also, we also have some groups here that are using this instrument for proteomics research, which is another for type of trace chemical determination. And they use some algorithmic analysis because the, uh, the, the analysis on proteins is a little bit more complicated in mass spectrometry because they can carry multiple charges. So you can, uh, you can see a lot of different M over Z values for the same analyte. And um, there, there are some computational methods and some algorithmic methods that are more effective at finding out what, what is the interrelation between a lot of the peaks that we see. And that, that can be very helpful from a research standpoint. I'm gonna walk you through how to set up your own method. So first we'll click on build acquisition method on the left side of the screen. And that will bring us to a screen where we have to set up our first method here. Now the first decision we have to make is what scan type would we like. And let's set up an EMS scan type. There are different methods in the mass spectrometer that can determine both what your output is in terms of signal as well as the sensitivity and selectivity of the instrument. First off, the enhanced mass spectrometry mode is what you'll probably be using most of the time. And that mode uses all three quadruples and it can uh, scan over a range of masses that you feed into the instrument over the entire chromatographic method. So th this will give you a chromatogram that you can select a certain range of and see what masses are present. This is really valuable if your analytes are in high enough concentration and or you aren't really sure what your M over Z values are of your analyte. And here we all we have to predefine is a range of masses. So we can say we want to detect 250 to 400 Daltons. And then the other parameter that we can we can change here is scan rate. And let's move that down to 250 Daltons per second. You typically want the time for each, um, each. so this, this cell here shows the time that it'll take the method to scan this, this range, given the scan rate. And we typically want that to be uh, under one second, but you can get some better looking chromatographic traces if you use a slower scan rate, because the mass spectrometer will be set on each given mass for a little bit longer. Now there are, of course, two different polarities we can designate in this EMS mode, positive ion mode and negative ion mode. And that will just tell the detector whether we are detecting uh, the, the positive or negative ions. Another, uh, another parameter that we can change here is the number of scans to sum. And that can be really useful if, you're, if perhaps your analyte isn't eluding sharply and you want to sum multiple scans over this range, and that will kind of magnify how the the, the, uh, the height of your chromatographic peaks from the baseline. Now, that's not all. We also have these further parameters, declustering potential, collision energy, and then several parameters involving the source. This is an example of the data readout from an LCMS EMS mode method. So this again is a method that detects all of the masses over a given range 
and we'll determine the abundance of each mass at each time point. So as, as seen here, you can just highlight anywhere on the chromatogram and it will show all of the masses present and their relative intensities at each time point. And we can even move this selection over to capture different instances in time. The most, probably the most valuable time points are these peaks in the chromatogram. Now you'll notice that the total ion chromatogram above seems very crowded and uh, th there's a lot of peaks there. It wouldn't be considered a great uh, chromatographic trace if this was for one single analyte. However, we can click on the XIC uh, icon above here and we can extract one given mass. Here I'm extracting the range 252 to 252.6 m over z and this yields actually a very clean looking chromatogram um, right, right here alluding at 1.46 minutes and this, this is an example of the kind of uh, extraction that you can take from a total ion chromatogram in the EMS mode and then pare that down into one mass. This is also great if you maybe don't know what your mass is beforehand. We can go back and we can select this peak that's right here and we can, we can choose any of the mass ranges in this spectrum right here and it'll generate a chromatogram for us from our selection. So here I selected the masses 249 to 250 m over z, and this gave me a peak at about 1.77 minutes. And you can then reason about what that is in your sample. So these are the main benefits of the EMS method in that you have an ability to detect a wide range of masses, and then you can actually extract each mass into its own chromatogram later. The next method is selected ion mode or SIM. And this uses just one of the quadrupoles to select a, a certain a list of M over Z values that you can input into your method and send these to the detector to, to be shown in, in your output. And this, this method of detection will show an overlaid chromatogram with several different colors, each color representing one of your analytes that you put in. SIM mode has the added benefit of better sensitivity. However, it's more selective, so you may miss some of the potential analytes that are in your, in your matrix. So this, this method I use when I already have a good feel of what my M over Z values are gonna be, and if I need any added sensitivity in my method. This method is called Q1 multiple ions, Q1MI, and it's an example of the selected ion mode methods. So here we can list various masses that we want to detect, and I usually go out to three decimal places. So I can put 252.108, and then we'll, we set a time for detection, and again, this depends on the length of your list. If you have more masses on your list, you probably want a shorter time to keep that cycle time uh, up here around one second. Here you can also import a list of masses which is really helpful because the software actually clears all of your masses if you have to change the scan type. So it's nice to have an imported list of all your masses. Some of my methods that I have have 30 masses that I monitor so um, it's very painstaking to have to re-enter all 30 of those. It's nice to have a list on hand. This is an example of the data readout from a selected ion mode method. In this case, we use the Q1 multiple ions uh, scan type. And we scan 38 separate ions, which can be seen up here in the upper left. And I hope you can see that there are different colored traces on the chromatogram. And this, this total chromatogram is an overlay of the individual chromatograms of each of the 38 ions. We can visualize the 38 ions by clicking on the XIC button up top. And these are the masses, and I can even click on uh, one of these masses and it will extract just the chromatogram for that mass. And as we can see, it 
overlays with this peak in the total ion chromatogram. Now, the main difference in the spectra of the selected ion mode chromatograms, or the selected ion mode spectra, are that where, whereas in EMS mode, which is the total ion, we are scanning over a range of masses. Here we only have the distinct separate masses. Now this lowers the background, the background noise of the whole method, which can lead to lower limits of detection. However, you only get really small snapshots of masses in a range rather than the full picture of every mass in a range. So there are, the, there are benefits and drawbacks to this method. The next types of methods are the MSMS methods, which use all three quadrupoles. The first quadrupole selects a parent ion M over Z. The middle quadrupole will then fragment that with a stream of inert gas. And then finally, the last quadrupole is used for detection of the product ions. Now this method is very useful because it gives added selectivity even on top of what would normally just be the selected ion mode because a given parent ion can fragment into one predictable product ion. And that gives us a, an immense amount of selectivity, which gives a much flatter baseline and can, and can drastically lower the limits of detection and limits of quantification, which are really important for some of our very, very low concentration applications. There's also an extension of this method, which is a MS, MS, MS. So this fractions the parent ion twice. And th this can be useful for even larger molecules when you have maybe a, a, very, a very small signature of a product ion that you need to fragment the parent ion twice to get to that signature. MRM mode is multiple reaction monitoring. Now this is an example of, it's kind of a hybrid of the selected ion mode and the MSMS fragmentation. So we have to predefine a Q1 mass, which is the first quadrupole, and this, this would be essentially the parent ion. So we can say that if a parent ion is 400.000 Dalton, and we're expecting after fragmentation, this is the Q3 mass. So this, the Q3 mass has to be lower than the Q1 mass. So if we're expecting a loss of say 100 Daltons, just to keep the numbers easy, then we would put the Q3 mass as 300. And then it also allows you to set a time to scan. And this depends on how long the list of your masses is. Um, since uh, I'll just put 100 milliseconds here for now. Now you can, you can go on adding several other masses. You can even change the Q1 mass to be something different. And then, or you can keep the Q1 mass the same and look for a different product ion. Say if I'm expecting a loss of 200, I can put in a performer mass 200 would be 200. This is an example of a data readout from an MRM method, which is an example of the uh, MSMS type method where we see fragmentation. So here, similar to the to in the selected ion mode chromatograms, we see overlays of a few distinct uh, fragmentations of parent ion into product ion. And we, actually, we can see again what these are um, by clicking on the XIC button up top and we see these distinct peaks and their corresponding analyte here. So if we wanted to just visualize one, we can again extract it. And it is shown here. When we click to open up the spectra, we're only monitoring for eight different um, different reactions happening. So the, the parent ion is on the left here, slash, and then the product ion. So there are, there are other methods that monitor a single parent ion and then collect data for all, all masses of a product ion. That type of method is called a product ion. This MRM method is very, very useful in detecting analytes at very low concentrations, because as you can see in the overlay of the chromatogram, the baseline is very, very small on here, which means we can get down to limits of detection that are much lower than we could with an EMS or a selected ion mode uh, mass spectrometry. The next step in setting up your very first 
LCMS method is to determine the auto sampler settings. So the auto sampler is the needle that injects into each, uh, into each vial and will draw out a predetermined volume at a certain speed. So here I have the injection volume set at five microliters. So my injection needle is gonna pick up five microliters of my sample and then inject that onto my HPLC column. Uh, there are also some, some other various parameters here. Needle level is how high off the bottom of your vial are you picking up your sample. So if you see any of your sample maybe crashing out a solution, you might wanna raise that needle up just so it doesn't suck up any, um, any solids. That would be bad for the instrument. And then you can also enable some wash settings. There's, a pre, there's some predetermined wash settings where you have to enter a vial that you, uh, you, you want to, if, if you have like a, say an ethanol or an acetone rinse that you want to rinse your needle with, you can, you can enter where that is on the auto sampler and the auto sampler will then, after injecting your sample, pick up a little bit of this cleaning solution just to make sure that the needle tip doesn't get clogged or you're contaminating any of your samples with that needle. Next, we have to set our HPLC gradient. And this is something that I'm sure you've seen before, probably in quant. So I will go through it quickly so we can, we set the time at each step, the flow rate. The flow rate's usually uh, for LCMS is around 200 microliters per minute. And, and then we set the percent of our mobile phases. Lastly, our system automatically updates percent B once you update percent A, just to add to 100%, so that makes it a little bit easier for us. And then there's an interesting feature here called show graph, and that can show you the, the gradient that you just made. Um, here's, here's one I made. I typically like to uh, put in a re-equilibration step into my method. So I, I would expect all of my illusions to be done right around here at nine minutes, and then I pump back up to whatever my starting, uh, my starting composition was of my mobile phase and let that run for uh, four or five, up to 10 minutes even if I'm having some issues. This usually depends more on the HPLC column that you're using. Now there are some other parameters here, um, some limits on your HPLC system, including pressure, compressibility, dead volume. The, the main one that you need to pay attention to here is which solvent you're using. So this automatically shows A1 and B1. However, if you'll notice on our bin pumps here, we have four different lines running. And these, these ones here are A2 and B2. So if you wanna change it to A1 or B2, you have to remember. That. Finally, this is a little bit more intricate here, but we have a column oven actually, and I can show you that. It's right down here, this rack where we keep a lot of our columns. This top slot right here, you'll notice has a little hot uh, emblem. And if you set this to heat either the left side or the right side, that will heat up your column and that can help with some of the chromatography. The first step that you're gonna take when coming into the lab and setting up your LCMS is you're gonna to wanna to put on your column. So here I have a column set up, looks just like this, and you'll notice there is an arrow on the column. You wanna make sure that the arrow is pointing into the mass spec in inlet. If you get this backwards, that can seriously mess up your HPLC column. And we have a couple wrenches, you'll have to use the wrenches to screw on the metal fitting onto your, onto your column here. Uh, the next step will be to check the bin pumps here to make sure that we have enough solvent in each of our bottles to cover the little frit here. And it looks like we are good on that side. And we're running a little bit low on this side, but it's going to be okay for what we're running today. It's important to remember to use only HPLC or even mass spec grade solvents in these solvent systems or else it can gunk up the mass spec. Now, if you're running uh, this column for the first time in a while, it's gonna be important to get it re-equilibrated to the solvents that you're using. This is always a good idea anyways. So I'm just gonna show you how to do that using this little system right here. 
So here we can just go to controls, system on off, and we want to turn the bin pump to on, so we can press right there. Now this will start the flow of solvent. We want to make sure that our solvents that we're flowing are actually the correct solvents. Here it's set to A1 and B1. If you, if you can recall, I would like A2 and B2. So I'm just gonna set that, and they'll both change here. Change over here in a second. And if you wanna change the, um, the, the composition that you're flowing through your, your column, you can change it using percent %B and percent %A here. Now a good way to check to make sure that solvent is flowing through your system, through your column, and into the mass spec is actually to look in this window right here, and you should be able to see drops of solvent falling from the needle tip. Now I'm gonna take you through how to set up a batch of samples to run on the LCMS. So we're gonna to go to build acquisition batch on the left side. And first off, you're gonna to have to set um, a given set name and this can be something descriptive. I usually started off with today's date and then my PI and the name of my experiment. And then you'll need to, pre I preset four samples with different names. They're just different concentrations of an analyte. And then you'll need to define the vial position. The vial position can be found on the auto sampler. I'll take you over there right now. This is the auto sampler and I can pop it out here to get a closer look. So you'll notice there are numbers on the bottom of the auto sampler here and the numbers will run so the first sample is on the bottom left is 1 and then it'll run all the way up to 10 before starting back at 11 here and then running up to 20, 21 and so forth. And then finally we need to set the acquisition method um, that we want to find or that we want to use. So here I'm just using this one. So we've set the set name, sample names, the vial position, as well as method. And so now we are ready to submit. So I can submit these samples. And now they show up on the queue here. Now that our samples are submitted, we can first click on this icon here. It's the equilibrate icon. And I usually set this for five to seven minutes, just to make sure that the mass spec is nice and warmed up before my first sample hits it. And you'll notice that the Q server emblem there changes to say warming up. And finally, when the equilibration is done, this will turn to ready, and then we can click the start sample icon over here. And all of these turn to green, which means that your LCMS and all of the parameters are looking good and your sample will run. Now I'm gonna walk you through the steps of just some quick quantitation that we have with this software. So I'm gonna start off by loading up the quantitation wizard, which is on the left-hand side. You will typically have to build a quantitation method first, which is pretty straightforward. So I'm just gonna skip that step. And then I'm going to load up just one, one sample that I have that we can quantify together here. And it'll ask you to settings to use. You can just use default and then you have to load in the method that we already decided on. And then this is the data. We have analyte peak area and peak height, which are two very useful quantitation uh, metrics. And then we can go up here and go peak review window if you need to change any of the integrations if it, say, picks a totally wrong peak, you can select the correct peak and then click this select peak button here. Um, this probably isn't the right thing to do for this one because the correct peak was picked originally. However, if you do want to manually integrate, which is another useful thing, we can click on this icon. And then if you want to cut out a little bit of the baseline, you can just click and drag and get a new integration this new integration will then be um, accepted into the table, and when, um, when you're done, you can export this table for further analysis. Um, thanks for watching the video, and I hope you learned something.